Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Marie and I'm an artist that's fairly new to gouache and I'm trying to document my process and sharing it with you all so that maybe it can help you all in your journey. So today I wanted to share my process of this gouache study I just completed last night of Cavendish Beach. So let's get started. So we have a lot of stuff to cover in this video. I think I'm pushing my limits on uh, what I want to show in each video. So I hope it's beneficial for you all. And if it helps you, please give it a like and subscribe because I'll be posting more videos of my process um, in the future. And I always read your feedback and your comments. So um, if you have any feedback or any suggestions that you have on any future videos, I would love to hear uh, what you think and I will definitely try to answer you back. So I wanted to show you the original reference photo. This was taken uh, many years ago. It's actually the original developed photo and I can't believe that I still have it. I, I don't have that many developed photos anymore and I found that this was such a beautiful photo. Um, and back in the day, I wasn't even painting yet, so I'm very surprised that I actually have a photo of a landscape with no people in it posing. So even though the photo was a really beautiful one, I still wanted to edit it to my liking. Um, the original horizon line was straight in the middle and an artist technique is to apply the rule of thirds so I cropped uh, the photo so that the horizon fit a third of the way at the top and I found that it was more pleasing to the eye and more interesting. Another thing that I did was because the original photo was so gloomy and you can't really see the colors, I adjusted the photo um, and increased the saturation and also a bit of the brightness so you can actually see what colors uh, were there. Um, this looked very, very gray, so I found that it helped me out. Uh, when I was painting and I hope this tip helps you too. And here's the photo after I had cropped and also adjusted the saturation and brightness and I found that it made a world of a difference. Um, I was more inspired in painting this study and I just love those little um, accents of orange all throughout this photo that I didn't get to see in the original one. So I was really happy after um, I finished editing. And for this study, I wanted to practice using an artist technique to design a painting, which is using a Notan sketch, which is either a two or three uh, value thumbnail sketch of uh, your reference and it's just to give you an idea on just basic shapes and how the composition looks so you kind of do different uh, variations of sketches of uh, light and dark and then you choose which one you like the best and that's what I did and um, I wasn't sure if I should make you guess uh, which one I chose, but I'll tell you now that I chose the one on the top left. And I hope you agree that I chose, I guess, the most pleasing to the eye one. So I said that uh, there's a lot of jam-packed information and... Um, I hope this video doesn't trail on for so long, 
but I found that all the information was so useful that um, I couldn't not share it, especially after I kind of recorded everything. So now I'm sharing my supplies uh, for painting. So once again, my two uh, trusty jars of water and also I used three types of brushes for this, a three quarters flat, a half inch flat, and uh, a round brush. I'm not really sure what the size is. And this time, instead of using the cheaper uh, student grade uh, white, I decided to use the designer white and oh, what a difference it made this time. And also I uh, used a limited palette again of a yellow, red and blue. So here I'll post the reference photo and I always find it useful to have the reference photo in process videos so you can see how I painted a certain way or a certain color and um, that's what I look for in videos so I'm hoping that it helps you have the reference shown uh, while the video uh, progresses. I get so sad when I forget to press record at the beginning and that's just what I did <laughs> and I'm so sorry about that. I didn't have um, on video how I had toned the paper or did the sky so but I can explain it to you. I did um, a diluted wash of a mix of orange and also uh, for the sky on top of the orange i had mixed a lot of white with a little bit of the yellow and the tiniest bit of blue to get this mint uh, this mint color and um, part of the challenge was uh, to uh, create uh, a painting with 90 to 95 percent greens so that's what I tried to do. So it, it was a lovely minty green. It's I've never really uh, painted mint green sky, but for some reason in this painting, it worked so well. So after painting the sky, I started to block in the path in the forefront of sand and also started with the darkest areas. Um, I just basically mix with my round brush, um, just a mixture for the sand, a bit of the red and yellow to make some sort of orangey reddish tone with a lot of white. And I just play with, you know, the, the warm and cool and, uh, yellow and, and red with a little of blue to kind of desaturate it a bit uh, so it won't look so bright. So having um, a limited palette I found was so useful for me because it, it's nice to narrow down your options. You don't really have a lot of choices for colors so you kind of have one or the other which was so useful so if you haven't tried painting with a limited palette, I totally suggest it because it was so useful and you learn a lot doing it. And you can tell that I'm babbling so much because the video is so much more advanced than what I'm describing, so I'm sorry about that. Uh, for the darkest darks, I just mixed all three primaries together without any white, and you just get this really dark color. And for greens, obviously it's yellow and blue. And uh, just to block in the different areas, I just vary the amount of yellow to the amount of blue and then add a little bit of the red to kind of desaturate it, add some white. So you kind of just study uh, the different areas and try to block in different sections with just studying the color of that section and then you just block it off. It's less intimidating uh, to do it that way than to work each and every detail. So I found that really helpful to just block in each area and until it's all covered and then after that go in with detail. 
So I'll let the video play on uh, while I do all the blocking and then uh, I'll comment on the next step after that. I also wanted to say that um, I really enjoy using a round brush with gouache versus a flat. For some reason, I'm not getting the paint consistency accurately with a flat brush versus a round brush. So I suggest that you try all different types of brushes and see uh, which one uh, you seem to be uh, painting better with. I feel like our our brushes for some weird way is kind of like Harry Potter's wand <laughs> and my favorite wand in gouache seems to be the round brush. And I'm so sorry I forgot to press record again for another section of painting, uh, but I can explain that after uh, blocking uh, the whole area, I started with uh, studying the details and it's kind of the same as blocking, but just uh, seeing the difference of contrast or color variations within the area that you block to kind of break up um, the whole mass of shape. So that's what I just did, uh, studying the color, studying to see if I need to desaturate more or add more uh, yellow, add more uh, red and blue. And um, I just uh, adjust accordingly by value or if a color feels wrong. So it's really just looking back and forth between the photo reference and your painting. Uh, kind of seeing, uh, it's kind of like that game uh, where you spot the differences between two um, two comic <laughs> comic drawings or something, and you just see what uh, you need to do. Um, the trap is is that you you don't really want to copy exactly like. Uh, the photo reference and that's something that I need to work on too um, so there's a degree of you know spotting the differences between a uh, photo reference and your work but also um, seeing your work as a whole and that's something about the journey with me that you know I'm trying to discover as an artist So here you see me adjusting uh, the background in the distance and the atmospheric perspective. Uh, usually from what I was learning is that uh, with uh, atmospheric perspective um, to uh, make the landscape recede in the background, it becomes more lighter, more blurry, more bluish and I think I had uh, made it too light so I'm just darkening uh, it again but still keeping it kind of a bluish green and that's something that you'll just keep doing uh, for each section just working over and that's what I really like about gouache is that you can just paint over any mistakes that you have made and it doesn't look like you made any. <laughs> So you see me struggling with the grass in the forefront. I tried to use the round brush and I tried to make vertical uh, strokes with uh, the brush and trying to uh, copy the grass that you see in the front unsuccessfully and later on I'll correct it. So. Uh, just ignore that area for now and later on you'll see me uh, correcting it um, much better than I'm doing right now. So here I start to add those little dark uh, details of I think it's either stones or rocks on the sand and I found that it was such a high contrast that the eye goes there instead of where I wanted the focal point, which was um, that uh, horizon in the background. So I had later um, adjusted the value of those stones so that it's less contrast with the sand and I, that seemed to work. 
And here is me taking off the tape, which is one of my uh, favorite parts of the, doing these videos and showing all the lovely edges. Gosh, does it make a huge difference without the tape. And this is the finished piece. Um, I was really happy when I completed this. I was very pleasantly surprised at how um, nice it turned out. Um, all the colors looked harmonious. It looked very calm and peaceful. So I think I achieved what I wanted to and uh, including lots of greens. And I also wanted to mention that uh, this was actually a challenge prompt from an art group called The Art Refuge on Facebook. And uh, I was really glad that I participated in this challenge. I also wanted to mention that the owner of the art group, um, Heather Ean, has been uh, giving me some critiques and some tips. We had done an exchange and I found that I improved so much and I am so grateful to her help. If you want to check out my other videos before this one, you'll see the progression of how I've improved. At least I think that I did. So I'm curious to see what you think. So you can write that in the comments and let me know. So that's it for this video. I am so... Um, happy that I posted this video and painted this painting and shared my process with you and I feel like I included a lot of tips in this one compared to others so I hope that it did help you and if it did if I can just ask you to like and subscribe I'm trying to post um, two videos a week and sharing my process and more tips and uh I'll be posting more uh, videos in the future, so you can check that out. And also, I am on Instagram, uh, and I do a live uh, mini gouache uh, sketch uh, on Sundays. So um, you can check me out. It's uh, M Santos Art as uh, the username. So I look forward to seeing you there too. And I wanted to thank each and every one of you for watching these videos and liking and subscribing. I'm so grateful for you all and it motivates me to do more videos. So thank you for that. I hope that you find the time to paint this week and uh, let me know in the comments how you did or show me your work. I'd love to see them. So I hope that you have a great week. Happy painting and I'll see you on my next video. Bye.